Um, I was sent the previous speakers for this talk. Yeah, I'm all doctor yung pisa. Sabi ko, okay, I think I need a title. So, which I actually was already mentioned, I'm the chief. <laughs> so, Chief Raymond. Right? Para at least naman medyo may konting bigay niyo na sa akin yun. Okay. So, I'm, I'm Chief Raymond. I would want to call myself the Banana Chief. Um, I'm actually a fourth generation farmer. My great grandfather was a farmer in Iloilo. Uh, talagang, yeah, grassroots farmer. He really started with our own farm there in Iloilo. I think it's still with the family until now. Uh, my grandfather naman, he was able to send my grandfather to agricultural school. So, uh, as in agri, but never really practiced because he joined the military. He was able to practice when he retired. Uh, he retired in the Yulo Sugar Estate sa Alamba. Uh, na na yung dad ko. I mean, so, kasama yung dad ko. My dad rin naman was able to go to school, never took agriculture, never practiced, also until he retired. Uh, he was an ex-professional turned weekend uh, retiree farmer um, in Pagsanghan, which is where our, our farm is. Um, and then here I am, so as a fourth generation farmer. Um, again, maybe different feel, different look, millennial, as my title would suggest, but non, nothing different. Uh, but, uh, still the same, still a farmer, which I will be talking about more in a, in a few. So that's my family. So, marami nang dumagtan dyan through the years. Um, yeah, may asawa na yung, yung sister ko on, the, on your right. Ah, wala pa rin. <laughs> uh, at least, yeah, so it's uh, additional people in the family. Um, and in the middle, in the center, is actually my parents. So my dad and my mom. And Villa Socor is actually a story, it's a love story. It's my dad's love letter to my mom. So Socor, it's not my last name, as, as kanina ka, my last name's Aaron. Kunyari na lang foreigner, but it's actually ilongong ilongong yung aawal. Um, so Sohora is actually my, my mom's name. So, uh, so my dad, it was my dad's love letter to my mom. Uh, kaya at the center of our, of Villa Sohora farm, is the heart of Puso ng Sabi. And why Sabi? You'll see more about it as, as I progress. Um, so yeah, Villa Sohora farm, Agri Echo Village. This is our first, uh, this is really the venture of my dad as his retirement home. It's in Pagsanghal Laguna. I'll run briefly through what we do because I'll be talking about it more throughout my talk. Um, yeah, so we have a river in the property. You see our guest, our foreigner guest drinking buko. Uh, we have a carabao. So, toto ay mga kids when see the carabao. Uh, we have our own, it's a concept hot room. It was actually left by, uh, by a movie called 13 Days, uh, year 2000. It's Kevin Costner movie. But Kevin Foster was never there. So, they just needed some shots and some aerial view of, of the movie. They used the farm. May na yuan sila concept hut. We actually used it as a room. So, this is now our room, dormitory room, good for 16 people. We tried to refurbish and reuse whatever uh, was left. And then, our very special, uh, uh, sorry, our Inasandi Tai Manuel. So, it's our, our Ilongo fusion with uh, Lagunense dish in our farm, and that's my pamangkin na nagdalaw sa farm. So yeah, basically, it's, really a, it's a destination where you can visit the farm, get the feel of a farm. Um, but spin, spinning off from that, it's actually Villa Sofara Farm Health Chips. So ito ngayon yung lasaging, lasaging portion. Kung bakit? We actually, so I, we're, we're in Laguna, so we actually have the best, of course, I'm, I'm not biased, but I am. We have the best native sabah, uh, in the Philippines, here in Calabarzon. Better than the ones in Mindoro, better than the ones in Davao. So the last talk ko, actually, maraming taga Mindoro, taga Davao, para kumigilin sa lipo din. Since we're all practically from this area, I think we can all agree that we have the best, we have the best sabah. And what, what did we want to do with it? We wanted to make banana chips, plain and simple. From plant to pack within 24 hours. So we have our own farm. Yet, we also uh, help a lot of our farmers in our neighboring communities. So, 95% of the bananas we actually get from our partner farmers. So, we get it from there, from plant. We have our own manufacturing facility. We pack it, we sell it, all within 24 hours. Uh, this is how we cook it. So, you see, we have our cooking facility in, in, uh, in our place in Pagsangan. Which is actually, you guys are lucky, it's like an hour, an hour and a half away if, if you want to visit 
feel free to contact me or anything if you want to see it. Um, yeah, so it's, it's very nearby. And yeah, so this is the best banana chips you'll ever have in your life. You have some of it. Like, I'm I to So, I'm So, So, yeah, you can, you can, uh, you can taste it. Meron pa, meron pa, meron coming nila. So, and to somehow prove to you that it is, it's the best banana chip you ever. Um, yeah, so we branded Villa Socorro Farm, so that's the farm, but calling it Sabanana. Really trying to promote it as Saba, uh, coming from Laguna. Kasi maraming misconception that people use table banana for their banana chips packaging. Well, that's not banana chips. It's usually Saba, so it's just what we want, really wanted to promote. So, kita nyo on the lower left, we have that whole buhig pa ng sating dyan to really show it to, to the people. And yeah, and when you visit the farm, you can actually get to visit our manufacturing facility. So here are guests na toon to sila, they get to see a pile of saba. Um, and basically, these saba are all from Laguna, maybe some in Quezon, but generally within our, within our vicinity. So yeah, why am I here today? It's really to talk about my topic, which uh, is Millennial Farmers, um, the future of Philippine agriculture. Emphasis on the question mark. So I'm, I'm not an expert on it. There's not much research per se on it. I'm a practitioner. What I really look for would be market trends, uh, market needs. Um, so much of it will be based on, on that. So based on the question mark, ito, si Tandang Panano. Si, speaking of, ano, si, I, I know si Dumbledore yan, but tawagin natin siya si, si Tandang Panano. And, di ba sabi nga nila, wisdom is actually not exactly knowing the answer, but asking the right question. So, I wanted to ask this question. It's a forum after. I actually wanted to finish my talk in like 30 minutes for it to be more of a forum and a discussion on if, if this is really where we're heading. Um, bakit? Speaking of tanda, is I'm sure I don't want to yung slide na yun eh, with medyo a poor farmer. Kaya, ano ang 57? Average age of farmer. See, alam na alam na. So, lahat ng mga presentation about farming, you'll always see the 57 as an average age of farmers. I don't even want to put the slide. You know it. So, yeah, 57 as an average average age of farmers. But as we progress, we can continue that. That will we can keep we can continue with that average just going up. So we want to see farmers like this. Diba? It's my good friend Enzo. So if you're familiar, he has of Earth Beat Part. In uh, in San Pablo, if not mistaken, very, very handsome farmer, right in front of me, um, and really getting his getting his hands wet, getting his feet wet in the farm. Um, yeah, kasi nakasuta ko ngayon eh, so I, para at least meron kaya nito. He can look like this. He would look like this when we see each other, but we can also look like that when we're in the farm. So yeah, so maybe this, uh, we want to talk. I want to talk about how this can be the future of farm. So yeah, basically what I want, what I, what I said, yeah, what I wanted to talk about would be trends, cheap trends, as I would want to tell you. First being money, very simple. Um, in a lot of hip hop videos, you'll see that like, it's all about the Benjamins. Money makes the world go round. So and as much as we want, as much as we try to avoid it, it's true. Um, Kaya naman walang, gusto mag, ma, walang millennials or the younger people don't want to get into farming because of the money. As a young farmer, why would you want to get into farming if you see your father nagbabanap, naghihirap in the farm, yet ah, pag bumagyo, kapun. Ubus lahat ng, ubus lahat ng kanyang uh, pananim, ng tinanim niya, no, no yield. So it's very hard to convince a young farmer to get into farming if yun yung pinalakihan niya. So, Basically, what I wanted to point out that there has to be money involved. There has to be a, a value into doing, to, to going to farm. So if someone's taking notes, what do you want to be doing? ano eh, kung sakit eh. Ito na lang, mas maganda. Entrepreneurial farm. So yes, it's still about the money. Yet, let's frame it better. Now, entrepreneurial farming or value-added farming is what we want to promote by adding value to your crops. Basically, not selling a banana as a banana, but selling a banana as banana chips. Imagine the value that you can create uh, by, by doing something like this, by thinking of the, your crops and adding value to it. So, 
Yes, we are doing bananas, but there are so many other crops out, out there. So let's try to elevate that and go to the next level. And this is where the money comes in. Because it's very little value eh, you can build from banana to banana. But banana to banana chips, the, the, it's practically endless. So you can really, you can really think about it. Now. Next is actually number two trend, the chief trend, is globalization. The advantage of globalization is that now, we are not only limited to these stores. So yes, we, we sell banana chips to these stores, but more importantly, because of the globalization that we millennials have now, now we can go to these places. Again, imagine the value that you can build on from just selling locally. Binabarat ka ng ibang mga local stores. Maghira makipag-usap sa ibang local stores. As compared to selling it abroad, where now your peso becomes dollars, your peso becomes euros. Again, it's endless, right? the, it's exponential, the possible growth that you can do with globalization nowadays. So again, these are the things that us millennials can really look into and really elevate agriculture to the next level. Oh, yeah, so I, I wanted to show you pictures. So this is uh, a Korean lady sa palakit yung magandang buhay nila in Korea. So they, uh, kumakain sila ng banana chips. Uh, these are some pictures on Instagram. Uh, actually, pamangkin ko yun. I have a film French uh, nephew. So um, in, in the US. So yeah, kumakain ng banana chips. Guam, Hawaii. So basically, our, our products are really going out there. They're talking about it. From our small farm in Pagsanghan, now at least the, the, the world knows about our products. And it's something that we, we really take pride in. And um, it really took a while and it took a lot of hard work and dedication. But then at least we're happy to be here now. Number three is actually design. Ito yung parang usually neglected. Um, again, 57 as an average age of farmers. Parang uh, hindi siya napapansin, that's very important. Again, I have crops, I sell it as is, what is I But again, this is where we can add value. We actually have a new product called Farmony. It's a harmony between farms, as the name suggests. Uh, we have we had some salikun, uh, samples kanina, pero kinuha na natin ako. Kinuha na natin ako. No, but, uh, so we have Farmony, uh, uh, nadala kami ng konti. So it's actually, it's very newly launched. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's very newly launched. Um, so basically, we really took a design, design thinking and, and uh, really took time. So I have, I'm with Therese, my, our, our member from my team. Uh, she's the, what's, what's your job description? I'm a social enterprise astronaut. She's a social enterprise astronaut. Her job is to take us to the to the cosmos. Uh, <laughs> take the farm to the cosmos. Yeah, that's like what we wanted to point out. Um, yeah, so this, this is what she was working on. Um, yeah, so really wanted to work on design, really take the company to the next level. Like, it's not just a farm product, it's it's something we can be proud of. It's farm. It's plain and simple. And not just us, again, most of this talk but I don't think, as much as I like talking about myself. I want to talk about others, other colleagues as well. So here they are. So I wanted to show you. So upper left, you have Jacinto in Lirio. Um, it's a hyacinth brand. So they make notebooks in the And we have Chalaya. So it's a tea company. Um, also healthy, proof crisp. Bayani Brew, one of my kasabayang uh, namin in the industry. Cafe Maria and founding farmers. So again, it, look, look at the emphasis on design. Uh, that maybe 10 years ago, it's not, it wasn't like this. Now, they really paid attention on making beautiful products that can stand out in the market, not just locally, but also abroad. Um, and you know, ang, ang ganda isipin na kaya natin makipagsabay. Is, itabi mo yan with, with lace, with other important products. Um, I, we're proud that we have products like this. Um, and and it's, it's, they're blossoming in our, in our marketplace. Number four, very important for me, is productivity. I think one big problem with our farms is that it's so unproductive. Um, again, maybe experts can speak more on that, but I just know it just by seeing it. They're so unproductive. Um, and we millennials, you know, once again, 
Raise of hands. Sino bang millennials in the room? Oh, actually, oh, no, no, actually, may, may, may dad niya. May dad has a third. Millennials. <laughs> millennials na seniors. But try to be millennials. Well, I think we're all millennials at heart. We're all young at heart. But, sige. Um, why do I, why do I give a very important, uh, why do I think millennials can really take us to the next level? Because we actually work very hard. Contrary to popular belief, some say we're so, we're, we're handed everything on a silver platter. We actually work very hard. But more importantly, we work smarter. Bakit? Sa mga ka-age bracket ko dito, you, you'll, you'll feel me with this. Imagine, I started saving my files sa mga paper na required sa akin in, sa school in a floppy disk. I'm actually, oh, hindi ko na inhabit ito. Hindi, alam mo, may masalapan pa. Yung nag-start ako ito na. Medyo mas maliit na lang konti. So I started with a floppy disk. And then a CD. So medyo dumadali, mas malipis na konti. Eventually to a flash drive. And now, imagine, in the cloud. I don't even have to hold anything to save my files. So, yan yung pinagdaanan ng millennial generation. That's why we work hard, but also work smart. We started with a typewriter. Now, we can make papers in our phone. We started with, what else? Um, yeah, but basically all these things, parang nadaanan ng millennials, yung, ah yeah, encyclopedia. I had to borrow my parents' Britannica na pagkabigat-bigat, nakalagay pa sa shelf sa taas, mahulugan pa ako minsan. I had to get that, go to letter D to find something, and then only to find out wala pala dun. Updated na pala yung Britannica namin. To now, at least I can just go on my phone, as quick as that, look for like a movie schedule or research on something, that quick and easy. So, yeah, we know how to work hard, but more importantly, we know how to work smart. And that's very important in agriculture because it's, it's very hard work. But at the same time, to bring it to the next level, we have to work smarter. Um, yeah, so one of my dear friends and my farming idol is actually Sherry Atelano, if you're familiar with her, of Agrea. Uh, she started with Gawan Kalinga, she's now with Agrea. So I, this is a very good image of her. Kike um, Nakikai with her, with her boots, yet with a gray attack. But her shirt with farming is cool, smart, sexy, unique. She's really taking it to the next level. And yeah, so with her work in Marine Duque, I think it's very important in showcasing that really building a farming landscape within a certain region, within a certain area, can do so many possibilities. Making them productive. Actually, for me, dalawa lang yan eh. Making your farm productive and then increasing the value. Imagine mo, even one of those, doing mo one of those would really be, be a big help. But imagine doing both, having double your productivity, double, doubling your productivity, doubling the price. Imagine the difference it can make to our farmers. Again, easier said than done. But then, I'm not the only millennial working on this. So the idea is really create a movement of all these millennial farmers doing something in their own respective fields and hopefully uh, reaping the benefits in a certain number of ways. Tech. Tech is right in our fingertips nowadays. So that's my number five banana chief uh, friend. Yeah, so as you can see, ito, I think this is more in the US rather than here. But these are things we can really adapt moving forward. Um, again, there are a lot of experts who can really talk to us. On, and, uh, as I said, I'm not an expert. I actually look, see outside help when we need you magnet the class and new technologies in terms of farming. Uh, but then, I wanted to use the example of Next Level Farms. They're an indoor hydroponics company in Palanyake. So, imagine a container van, uh, pero mostly, medyo sosyalin yung mga crops nila. So, they usually do mga uh, basil and mga arugula. So, a little bit on the high end, they sell it to the high end markets. But these are actually the possibilities now, vertical farming, um, and being closer to the market. But on top of that, again, I, I, I think it's a trend, but at the same time, hindi naman tayo nagigit, nagkukulang sa lupa. So it's not really a big problem. It's, it's nice to be close to the market, but yet we have so many farms all over, but there are so many different issues where we can put tech in, which goes to my second example, which is Cropital.com. 
Um, I think they have they have new farms coming out today, if I'm not mistaken, or kahapon pa yun. Ang bilis maubos. Propital is actually, they're trying to remove the the problem of yung mga, nagpa 5-6 sa farmers. So, if, if you need, uh, if the, a farmer will need uh, capital, hence capitals, uh, for, for their own farms, capital really helps and crowd funds itong capital na kailangan ng mga farmers. So, every once in a while, they would release, they would partner with farms uh, to give them cap capitalization via their online partners. So again, these are the possibilities, kumbaba. There are so many out there, again, Feel free to maybe in the open discussion. Let's just talk about it, or even after what what we have in mind. But basically, these are the examples we have out there of really tech, of tech-heavy people um, going into farming. And actually, going back, pala, si next level farms. I think I met some of them. They're actually Wharton graduates who went back to the Philippines to to go into farming. And Enzo Panina studying in the U.S. So, maaring dili tong trend of going back. Millennials going back home. To really work in the farm. So imagine the even Sherry actually. I'm going back. We're going to examples. But even Sherry was a an award winner in certain competitions. Very, very, very bright. So they're all going back into farming. Ni ko ni ko si namin sa lili ko. I'm not. So um, yeah. So para basically they're very these are very smart people going back into farming and really uh, working their working working and doing everything they can for for the industry. Number six is farm tourism. Konti ano lang. It is actually, I, I saw this online. So sabi ko, ang ganda na sa ano eh. So imagine, it's more fun in the Philippine farms. Farm tourism, may kalabaw, may sun, water. Do you see something wrong in the picture? Anything wrong? Sorry. Pag-take mo dun sa background, parang hindi naman sa Pilipinas. <laughs> we have so many, so we have so many, we have so many farms, farm tourism destinations. Sabi ko, bakit hindi Pilipinas yung ginamit nila? So it's, it's a funny anecdote. But yet, I want to give you examples of this in the Philippines. Um, which is us. <laughs> Skip to muna. Us, actually. So we have our, our location in Pagsalhan, Laguna. So yeah, it's, this is my dad. He touring around our guest. Uh, we have a river. We have our... Uh, yeah, may kabayo kami doon. It's really showing, showing people around the farm. And, and we, we actually like getting kids and families because we can <coughs> teach them, educate them on the possibilities in the farm. And for me kasi, with farming, it's really, the possibilities are endless because now, with farm tourism, I mean, you're not just selling products, you're selling something to the mind, you're selling experiences. So even with very low capitalization, our farms can actually level up as long as they know how to sell that farming experience. So, kahit malit lang yan na kubo, in a nice farm, really know how to sell it. It, it can be a very nice farming, this farm tourism destination. So, yeah, for me, this trend is actually one of the uh, game changers to mga in farming and, and agriculture. Kasi as long as you know how to do it, right, you, can really, you can really go far. Yeah, so, we see uh, guest time and going to the farm looking at our banana chips facility. May leave the banana chips. Ah, yeah. So we also have glamping in their own farm. So again, a lot of people are doing this all over the Philippines. I just at least wanted to show you the possibilities of just being in a farm, just putting a tent out there, lagi mo lang ng kutsyon and charging maybe $2,000, $5,000. $2,000, $2,000, $2,000. Are you willing to pay that? No, but, I mean, but there are a lot of people willing to pay that, especially for foreigners. Give, Again, you're selling the experience. You're not selling the use of a tent. You're not selling the use of a cushion. You're selling the experience of sleeping, breathing, living in the farm. So, and when you sell that, then it's it's a different story. I mean, example na Apple, you're not just selling a phone, you're not selling a laptop, you're selling that experience of owning an Apple. So, a lot of, uh, again, on market trend will be all these exper experiential, products and services that we all that we, we buy. Even Starbucks is an experience. So all of this, um, why why can't we apply it into farming and really take it to the next level? Next is farm to table. Number seven uh, trend is farm to table. Uh, I connected that to organic uh, organic farming. So nowadays it's it's such a buzzword to be organic. Everyone's trying to go organic. Because again they can claim a higher value if it's organic. Yes, it's a bit more tedious, but mas pwede ka nang mag, uh, 
well, charge a little bit bigger if it's an organic one. Uh, this is our own farm to table. Ano ba bang mas pa farm table sa Buddha fight? Diba? So, yung, yung dahon lang sa aking nandiyan, uh, we have our Vinasal ni Tay Manuel, our uh, inihaw na Leopold ni Evelyn, at uh, pinala pa lang tilapia ni Mang Natnoy. Tapos, we have our puso ng saging ni Kuya Toto, ginataang puso ng saging ni Kuya Toto, at buko juice. So, most of it are from the farm. We also make our own vinegar or banana cider vinegar. So, yung sausawa ng, ng lembo mo, uh, cider vinegar, which you also make from the farm. Oh, wala, so I'm forgetting something. Uh, yeah, yung rice, hindi pa naman. <laughs> we're, not, we're not yet, not yet. But, of course, it's from the nearby farms. So, yeah, so these are a group of Taiwanese, if I'm not mistaken, going to the farm, really experiencing our, our own farm to table. And more so, yung farm ni nga, so it's our farm to snack naman. So it's not just farm to table, now what we wanted to do is package all these farm products and offer it, not just locally, but globally, into farming and farm to snack. Number eight. So the last two I really uh, delve upon, so which means I need to get more of this. Okay, sustainability. Such a buzzword nowadays. Coming from the root word, stain. No, 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 But by saying sustainability, what you have to, want to push for is create, uh, leaving a stain, leaving a mark, leaving a dent into your own field, whatever it may be, and making sure that it revolves around you. So to be, give you more examples, um, GGGI and DTI did a study of Pilesa Coro, I think it was like two years ago, um, best green business practices among MSMEs in the food processing industry of the Philippines. So one thing we do is actually we collect, we collect rainwater. Some of these things, not to be honest, we just did it because we wanted to. Until GGGI and DTI did that study, the para natuwa kami, eh, okay, may kabuluhan pa rin ginawa natin. For us, it was just like, basically, we had excess, parang excess na mga ganitong containers, might as well collect rainwater. And we used it to clean our bananas for the banana chip manufacturing. Another thing is that uh, we use ipa, rice hull, para initin yung mga pogon for the banana chips. Pag masunog naman yung rice hull, kasama na rin yung mga balat ng saging, it becomes fertilizers and partly feed for the feeds para sa mga pigs namin in the farm. Yung pigs naman, it becomes lechon. Pag may, pag may ano. And this is like organic lechon. As organic as it gets. Kasi saging lang. At saka saging lang kinakain niya. So medyo may pag-sweet uh, pa siya ng konti. So, imagine, imagine all these like, activities that we do inside the farm. We also do farm lechon. So tuwing may bagyo, it's actually very beneficial for us. Instead of feeling na feeling sad na binagyo kami in our farm, we actually turn, turn it into something positive. And we make farm lechon now. So we have uh, different tables. If you go to our Makati office, we will get the furniture that we use. Uh, and yeah, and GDGI and DTI did a study, and apparently we were only the two firms who had the number two to three level of uh, greening intervention. So which means it's not just <laughs> so it's not just uh, basically for us. It's not just for the environment, but more. I mean, I guess to some as a business. Uh, as a, from a business standpoint, they, uh, they quantified that into a saving of half a million for every year, which is actually big. Imagine the difference of that, uh, that you can, now you have an extra half a million to plow back into the business um, that you save via these greening practices. So, it's not isolated. It, it, can, it can actually help you as, as you build that whole uh, your business environment. And my favorite, number nine, and my last, my last trend, is actually the selfie or the groovy. So as we say, we millennials are the selfie generation. So we're very narcissistic, we're very selfish, um, when we think about ourselves. But on the contrary, there's also the groovy. Hence the rise of the social enterprises and the inclusive businesses, of which we both kind of align ourselves to. Um, and which, I, again, I wanted to talk to you more about. And you see in the background, that's actually our farmer partners. So that's Jerry. Um, he's not with the company anymore, but he's, 
our impact engineer. So his role is to really build uh, our network of farmers, as you see in the, in the photo. Um, and yeah, so being a, we try to involve other people within our community and not just be uh, all about ourselves in the business. Um, as I used the slide kanina, but giving you more value into it. A banana na pwede mong ibenta as a banana as well sa palengke. Uh, a middle man would only buy it at 50 cents. Kasi he can only sell it at 3 pesos, highest na yan, let's say, in the palengkawak market. Siyempre included yung transportation, effort niya, margins niya. Ganyan lang kalaki yung pwedeng value that you add to it. As compared to what we're doing now, we buy our bananas at 125 because we can sell it at 15 in SM. So, again, maraming dumadaan in the value chain. But more importantly, we can really grow this part because ang laki ng value addition in this part. So, this is what we're trying to involve, how we're trying to involve our partner farmers in the community by uh, buying their, their produce at a higher price. So imagine, it was really very happy. I really like this photo. I like showing people this photo. May barako on the upper left. You see really with a good smile. Hawak niya, Yossi at Cobra. What more can you ask for? So, magdi-deliver siya. I mean, of course, I, I don't smoke. I, I, I don't, I'm, I don't, but, uh, I don't encourage you to. But I'm just saying, he does, and he's just so happy. Na, he, deli he delivered, I think this is my 4,000 bananas. He delivered this. Aliwaan, for the 4,000, we pay them 125 per piece. Don't let me compute. Uh, 5,000, I think. So, he had, Aliwaan yun, hand him the 5,000, may pambili siya ng Cobra, pambili siya ng Yossi. He's very happy. Um, another, another picture, uh, again, bear in mind yung, yung common denominator, yung dalawang to, may Yossi din, so bibig pa. So they, how are they carrying their bananas? They're smoking a cigarette, they're gonna deliver via a horse. So, na, wala nang gas, hindi na kailangan buying their gas. They, they, they deliver to our farm. Um, again, we, we pay them directly. It's, it's a very good proposition for our farmers. And on top of that, not just buying their produce, what we actually do is we, we tie it up with, uh, with DA to do some training, uh, training programs with them. And actually, yeah, we're, we're really calling out other organizations who can really help us out. Because again, we have our own expertise. We, we market, we, we produce, but a lot of this community development side, uh, we're really trying to find partners who can really um, grow our, our impact with our own community. So yeah, if, if anyone out there sees a potential of really helping us out in that side, um, that's really one thing that we're really trying to grow as we move forward. So we're very happy DA help us. Sometimes DA, usually some government agencies would, would come in and try to help us out. But even private entities, by all means, and NGOs, we're very happy if there's something we can collaborate on. And yeah, so these are our magluluto at magbabalat in the farm. Very happy in, uh, in, in a manufacturing facility. Um, I, we owe a lot to these two people. Si Christy, our factory manager, and uh, uh, Ryan, our farm manager, they do a lot of the dirty work, as I may say, inside the farm, really making sure everything works. And this is our community in the farm. So every Saturday, we, hear, um, we have a retired priest, Father Ariel, in the middle, who would say Mass in the farm every Saturday, so that the kids won't have to go to uh, Bayan and pay 80 pesos round trip um, para lang mag, uh, mag tricycle. So now we hear mass, we can easily go there. I think this was taken during one of our Christmas parties. Usually mga 60 sila. I think this time we sila 100 kasi Christmas party, may pakain. So extra dami sila with this picture. So, so let's use this picture instead. But basically, um, yeah, so it's really, we're really trying to grow the community within our area. So malami dito are actually anak ng mga farmers. At yung farmers, yung asawa nila working in the factory. And then yung anak nila hearing mass in the farm every Saturday. So it's really building our own community uh, within Villa Socorro. Because after all, at the center of Villa Socorro is yung puso ng sati. So at the center of it is yung puso. And Socorro in Spanish is actually... Oops, sino bang... Donde esta esta? Mali ate. Okay. Socorro is actually help in Spanish. So what we're trying to do is really help our community um, do whatever we can for our own community within our, uh, our vicinity in Pagsapan. So, 
hindi na lang ako naman sa Spanish. Um, yeah, so our 2020 visions, spirit off from that, is building a community of empowered farmers living with kind and dignity. And how do we intend to do that? It's being the best practice in pro-farmer integrated value chain development. It's a bit of a uh, mouthful, yet I'll show you this slide. My dad do th did this a uh, couple of years ago. You don't even have to look at it specifically, but this is the framework of what you wanted to do in the farm. How integrated you wanted it. So from our factory, we have our different stuff all over. I, I won't even dive into it, but just, just so you can imagine um, the things we're trying to do within our own farm and within our own community uh, in Pagsakat. After all, as a very wise man once said, the business of doing good is good business. Wise man being in Manila, <laughs> But even wiser is actually si Tandang Panano. So, babalik ako kay Tandang Panano. To ask everyone in this room, champion. So, as we, as we move on to the open forum, is that, yeah, so what do you see are the other points at the same time, how you can make your own friend and more importantly, as we go out of this room, whether you are a millennial farmer or you can enable a millennial, a millennial farmer, what can we all do for the future of agriculture in this country? Of course, we know that the 57 years old, the average age of farmers, but as we progress, we each and each and every one, each and every person in this room would have his or her role into making this move on to the next generation. And hopefully, part of this talk has helped you and uh, you can collaborate or we can talk about it afterwards and see how we can really take it to the next level. Thank you very much. And if being a millennial partner, I guess I have to promote my social media accounts or our social media accounts. So website, www.millennialfarm.com.